We are live. In case you were wondering who I am, my name is Antonio Bryce. I am the creator of the comic book series brand. We are on Indiegogo right now. Uh, we have raised over $71,000 thanks to the kindness of good folks such as yourself. But I have another creator here with me today. He has a book called Tales from Nerosville. It is on Indiegogo right now. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jason Meadows. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. And thank you for getting the title right. <laughs> well, I, I, I definitely wanted to make sure uh, we we didn't have a, a small faux pas, as they say. So, yeah. But, uh, but I mean, yeah, man, so I've been checking out your book. Um, why don't you tell me about Tales from Nerosville? Uh so Tales from Nerosville is a book similar to Astro City in that there is no one main star or team of the book. I'm going to do a uh, rotating cast of characters and different genre stories. Uh, when I came up with the idea, I didn't. I would get bored writing the same characters over and over again. And with different story types, I realized I couldn't tell every story I wanted with the same characters. So, like, issues one and two are, like, my nod to Blue Beetle and Booster Gold from the late 80s, early 90s, where it's, uh, you know, kind of a buddy flick, the lovable losers. And uh, mm. issue three is, uh, I think it would be more at home in, like, Gotham Knights or Tales from Suspense, that sort of thing, where it's, and it's an over-the-top, like, 80s chasing with uh, strong violence and, you know, that that wild 80s dialogue so is this book mature readers or it's it's i would say like uh you know pg-13 there's no nudity there's no crazy violence like you're not going to see you know live eviscerations or anything like that but you know there is death there is some cursing uh i had been sticking mainly to comic book cursing and, uh, you know, so I'm not dropping F-bombs all over the place. But, yeah, I think it's uh, it's something most anyone could enjoy. I, I wouldn't send them out to an elementary school. That's probably where I draw the line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why, I, you know, I was very clear as, as far as brand. It is it is uh, not a kid's book. It is definitely mature readers. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of violence and language and stuff like that. And, and there'll be, you know. There'll be adult situations and whatnot. So um, we've got you pulled up here. And uh, let's see, I see some people in the chat already. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so this is the logo for your imprint, then I'm assuming this uh, Knuckle Supper Studios. Correct. Oh, yep. Okay. So let me see. And you've got this is this is the collected three issues that you're putting out? It's three floppies, issues one, two, and three. I uh, are, is it going to be one book, or are you shipping three separate books? I'm shipping three separate books. Oh wow! Yeah, but yeah, you already got these printed up, or I did not print them yet because um, with some of the perks, uh, there are you know there will be a thank you page in the comics, and uh, one of the things that I attempted that I thought was a little different that I hadn't seen other creators doing is some of the perks have uh, ad space in them. So if there are any other indie creators out there that want to advertise their books or YouTubers that want to advertise their channel, you know, for very cheap, they can get a half or full page ad in the book. So, oh, wow. the, yeah. So I thought that was something cool. Like, you know, I mean, as far as indie creators go, we're all in this together. You know, I don't, I don't look at you as my competition. You know, there is plenty of business. And there's plenty of lovers of comic books out there to to suit us all. So, like, you know, if Akari Press wants to throw an ad in the book, then I'll, you know, I'll gladly advertise you guys. And, you know, I mean, we're retweeting each other and everything else all over the place. So I, I thought it would be a good good way for other creators to get eyes on their properties. So the, the files for the books themselves are ready to go. Once the campaign ends... Uh, anyone that purchased ad space or anything like that is going to have to send me the files. I'll slide those into the books and then they go to the printers. Okay. 
Um, and, have you decided on who you want to use for your printing fulfillment and all that? Uh, I think I'm going to go with Peterson because I'm going newsprint. That's how I keep the price low. Oh, okay. Right. So you're gonna, yeah, because I know Alterna does have, uh, yeah, they have the newsprint option. So, okay, so you'll be printing this with uh, Peter Samedi? Yeah, yeah. I, I went back and forth with him a little discussing it. And for someone like me who is old school and still wants to do individual floppies, looking at printing them, unless I was going to hit 500 per issue of regular, you know, print comics, I, I couldn't find a cost below, you know, $3. So, right. um, you know, and then, so if I don't hit 500 copies, I'm looking at almost $6 an issue. So now I'm asking people to drop $25 for three issues, of com you know, for three issues. And that's just, that's a lot to ask people, especially on an unknown creator and an unknown property. So I kicked it back and forth and I really wanted my books to have like an 80s indie feel to them. So I thought the uh, the uh, newsprint helped add to that, had helped add to what I'm hoping to you know do, and it keeps the price point really low. That's how I can offer three issues for six bucks. Okay, so let me uh, get this question from Jalapeno Mill. He says, so if you're going to have ads, does that mean you can't ship uh, media mail? Uh, Zach poo pooed that idea before Lost Soul ship. And yeah, that's something I've heard media mail. You're not supposed to have advertisements on those. So. Well, I'm not going to tell them there's ads in it. Oh, okay. well, I'm just <laughs> saying the the reason, you know, I've, I've heard some horror stories in some of the groups I were in where, yeah. where uh, you know, they, they do randomly inspect some of those packages. Yeah. And if they, you know, you get fined if they catch you or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah. You know, it is something to consider. But again, I mean, the difference in shipping first class UPS or USPS versus media mail is still subsequently lower than the yeah, printing cost of the books. Yeah, yeah, big time. Uh let's see. So I'm showing, let's see, I'm scrolling down. I'm showing some of the uh interior pages that you've got posted up here. Uh, let me see. And uh yeah man, look at who's your colorist. Uh, that issue was colored by a guy named Randy Sargent. Yeah, honestly, he was a friend of a friend. I, there's, uh, there's some guys I knew who do like an ash can style book and, you know, they more or less just hand them out at cons and they met a guy who likes to color and, you know, gave me his name and I got a hold of him and he colored the first issue of Tales from Nerosville. I ended up coloring the second issue. And the third issue, pencils, inks, and colors were all done by the artist. Well, let me let me say this. Um, one thing I, I have noticed, especially since you're you're saying that you're gonna print on newsprint, um, you've got this colored in the right way. Um, I had kind of looked into possibly doing a newsprint edition of brand. I feel like if we do do that, I'd have to have it recolored because just some of the samples that I saw, the colors got really muted uh, yeah. in newsprint. And uh, yeah, I don't think that would work for what I'm trying to do, even though the cost was very desirable. But, you know, I, you know, we've spent all this money on a great colorist and he's doing all these special effects and all that. And it just, uh, it just didn't seem to work for what I was wanting to do. So yeah, these colors look like they will transfer quite well in uh, newsprint. So. Yeah. And uh, I was looking back at, you know, the first two issues, there are some darker pages on there, mm. you know, some effects and everything, but I have all of the artwork saved in all the layers. So I can go in and adjust things as needed. So yeah, I've got two backup hard drives. I back everything up twice. So I've got all the files. I can go in and make any changes I need. Right. And I do want to tell everybody that is listening right now, uh, you created two secret perks specifically for this stream today. Um, let me see. Can you I've got both of the links in the description, um, but can you tell us about each of the uh, perks that you are offering for the people that are watching today in case they want to get in on that? Uh, sure. The uh, first secret perk is the just the books. So it's the first three issues, and then I'm throwing in free swag. 
I have uh, different stickers, some magnets, and uh, I'm doing sketch cards. So anybody that orders that perk, you know, gets the books and the free swag for $6 plus $5 shipping. And the uh, second one is the comics plus the pinup that I'm doing. I'm and doing I've got a, that one shown right here. It's $25. Yep. So that's $25. And you get the comics, the limited pinup that I'm doing, and all the free swag. Okay. Yeah. As I've been creating the books and as the campaign's been going, uh -huh, any company that sends me like those promos where it's like, hey, you know, get 20 stickers for 10 bucks free shipping. Why not order the stickers? So I just got a pile of miscellaneous stuff here that I'm throwing in with orders. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, because I've got I've got stickers as a perk. Um, what was it? Uh, there's a couple of little sticker places that I've looked at as far as because uh, I had uh, Elliot Fernandez create a exclusive set for this campaign. Might have him do something for the next one as well because I, I really loved how uh, his set turned out, and uh, but he's gonna do a cover for the next book, so I was you know, I'm really excited about that. Um, you know, but let's see, we're on okay, so this is your featured perk here, and I mean, your prices are super affordable. What's your shipping like? I'm doing a straight five dollar shipping anywhere in the U.S. Uh, I think it's uh, eight dollars to Canada and then something like 25 worldwide. Oh, okay. Yeah, I talked to a couple different guys, and you know, the estimated shipping and all of that is hit or miss. So they just did a flat, and for the most part, except for you know, Doug Tanape one is Bigfoot Bill, um, the, the shipping's worked out for them. So yeah, I'm just doing a flat shipping, keeping the cost low. And after this first campaign, we'll see how it goes and see if that's a uh, a model I can stick to, but yeah, I mean, I hopped online on the USPS website and was doing some estimating. Like I've just picked, you know, like Seattle, a city in Texas, a city in California and Florida. And just to see like randomly what the average cost was going to be. Okay. And uh, let me see, but yeah, that's, that's six dollars. I mean, come on, six bucks and another five for the shipping. Uh, that, you can't beat that. Uh, let me see here. Sketch Therapy uh, in the chat says, don't call what you put in their ads. Uh, call it a feature spot or a sponsor spot. Calling it an ad is bad for me. Email shipping. And yeah, but I mean, sounds like you just gonna, uh, you're going to roll the dice on that. Uh, yeah, my dad told me, God rest his soul. He told me years ago that uh, it's better to ask forgiveness and beg permission. And, uh, <laughs> I've lived by that my whole life. I, I hear you on that. I hear you. Okay. So you just got a, I, and, and I, I will say the first campaign I ran for brand, for brand, uh, you know, I had a donation thing and I noticed you have the uh, anonymous philanthropist for a buck. Yeah. Nobody yeah. jumped on it, but Hey, I figured you put it in there. Why not? And then let's see here. Credited philanthropist, uh, two bucks. Yeah. That'll get your name on the thank you page and on the website. Let's see here. Dig it all in digital. It's five dollars, and I know you have a few people that have claimed that one. Yeah, I wasn't going to do a digital perk. I know most of the guys aren't doing digital perks, and my campaign was up a hot six hours, and I had people, you know, complaining that there was no digital perk. So I, you know, just pulled the trigger and threw one up, and a couple guys jumped on it right away. I hate digital comics. I don't like reading comics digitally. You know? I definitely like having them in my hand. I will yeah. say that. Let's see. Uh, all right. So tell me about your LCS comic retailer package. Uh, you know, with Marvel and DCs, with the bigger guys' current, you know, treatment of comic stores and, you know, their orderings and all that, the comic stores are struggling. So, mm. and, you know, and this is just another... Uh, thing I was trying to do to help some of the local brick and mortar comic shops, you know, with this perk, they get, I think it's three sets of the books and uh, a half page sponsor spot. Now, let me ask you this. Are you signing the books? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. That's so, man, 16, but you can't beat that, man. Hold up. Yeah. 
And, uh, and uh, tell me again, how many, you know, you said for the 16, how many books are you getting total of all three? I would have to look. I forget. I think it's three copies of the book. So it's nine books total. So you'll get three, okay, three, three, and three. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, comics plus the signed hero print. Okay. Yeah. For, for this campaign, I decided to uh, do a print and I set myself a goal of 30 characters on it. And uh, today, before we came live, I uh, I finished the 28th character on it. So I've got two more to go. It's going pretty well, and it's going to be an 11 by 17 signed and numbered print. It's uh, it's been a it's been a task. Because I see you've you've only got 50 of those perks, and a couple people have claimed those already. So yeah. Okay. So let me go down. Shameless self promote. Now I guess this is where you can have your ad in the the book. Correct, and you get you get a copy of issues one, two, and three, and you get you know the half page ad space. Okay, and then we go down. Heroes for you and the troops. Oh, you have for the troops uh, part. I do. Um, a lot of my family served in the military. My dad was a Vietnam War vet, so I wanted to. Uh, throw something out there, people that wanted to uh, support the troops, whether they have family in the military, active duty or not. So uh, they get a copy of the books and I send copies of the books through the USO to, uh, you know, soldiers who are currently serving. You know, just something to keep them entertained while they're out there. And then I see you've got, okay, here's a full page ad for $45. You can get, you can have your uh, full page Printed in the comp. How many? Uh, okay, so I noticed you've got six of these, and then you've got the half pages as well. So I guess you'll be putting them throughout the three issues. Correct. I think it was. I think I did six full pages and twelve half pages. So that would be a total of twelve pages of ad space throughout three issues. So I didn't want the book inundated with you know ads. Right. So there will be a couple pages of ads in each issue, and that's it. I got you. I got you. Okay. It's always good to ask because, yeah, I, yeah, I, I definitely would not want to over the book and just like, damn, okay, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I definitely put a limit on that, right? Smart move, smart move. All right, so $45 here gets you the LCS comic ad retailer package, uh, <coughs> right? Oh, I'm sorry, this is the one where they get the ad, the previous local, local comic shop one that was just the books to get them in their store, it was a discounted price on the books. This is the one where they get the books and the uh, ad space in the book. Well, I mean, I see this was the this one is showing a full page ad on Shameless Self Promotion Full. Correct. If you scroll and, up, there was another local comic store one that was just to get some books in the stores. If they wanted a handful of signed copies for their store, right, right, right here. This is the sixteen dollar yeah. one, right? Yeah. Okay, and yeah. then let me go. You got Dennis. Fujitaki, I probably butchered that. I Dal think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dalgada. Okay, hold up. Say that. Dalgada. <laughs> Dal Dalgoda. Dalgoda. Yeah. Okay, sketch. Okay, so so you got some uh okay, so two hundred and fifty dollar and yeah. it's only one, so you have an original piece of art. Correct. This, claim. this is a one of one, and like I said before, I'm a huge eighties fan, and mm -hmm. something I was uh hoping to do with each campaign is draw some attention to uh, it's the creators that inspired me. Uh, Dennis Fujitaki is an amazing artist and he did the book Dalgota back in the eighties from Fanagraphics. And uh, I reached out to him and he did a pencil and ink uh, pinup of Dalgota of the main character and also sent me an autographed issue one from his own collection. So uh, there's a, uh, a lot of fans of the eighties indie comics out there. So I put this one up. It's there's only one of them. And based on what he would uh, normally charge for something like this, I mean, it's like a $400 value. So I threw it out there seeing if anyone wants to, uh, you know, get a piece of original artwork. All right. So, okay. I'm out of the screen share. Now I want you to tell me about tales from Nerosville. What is the story about? Well, like I said, it's uh, it's a rotating cast of characters. Nero'sville 
is a town that has the highest population of superheroes in the world, which sounds awesome until you realize that the largest population of supervillains obviously comes along with that. So Nerosville was an industrial city back in the day. And, you know, as coal and other things go the way of the dodo and they're no longer in demand like they used to be, so the cities hit dire straits. And the city, the mayor decided that the best way to raise visibility and income was to offer tax breaks to superpowered heroes. And it drew them in and the city just grew and grew until now you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a superhero in this town. <laughs> and and uh, it makes for some fun photo ops, but it also makes for a lot of property damage and uh, collateral damage. So yeah, it's, it's fun. The, like I said, the first issue lightning Doug and Airball uh, are kind of level losers. They're not top tier echelon heroes. Lightning Doug doesn't care. Airball wants nothing more than to be part of the cool kids club. And, you know, like anybody that consistently tries too hard, he consistently fails. Uh, so when one of the largest villains gets a hold of something that could grant him ultimate power, it and ends up falling to Lightning Doug and Airball to stop him and save the day. And uh, it's not looking good for them. Okay. So you got three issues already. How many pages per issue are we looking at here? What am I getting? Uh, I believe the page count is 22, 21, and 21. So you've got 64 pages. I have hit the first stretch goal and added a four-page short into it. So we're at, what, 68 pages. At 1,000, I hit the next stretch goal and add another five-page short. And if we get to 1,500, I add a uh, nine-page short story to it. Right. So and put, put the page count into the 80s. Oh, that's not bad. And like I said, your prices are yeah, super cheap. Bucks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're not uh, you're not stretching the wallet out too much there. You know, with six no. bucks and another five for the shipping, and man, you get you get. Uh, sounds like you're going to get at least 60 some odd pages and possibly up to 80 uh, of content for what 11 bucks. Yeah. You can't yeah. beat that, man. It's like a Happy Meal or something at McDonald's. That's what I thought, but people aren't jumping on it. I don't know if it's one of those seems too good to be true kind of things or what it is. But you know, there are people are, are when I speak to people, they're they're concerned about the price. I don't know if they think I'm running a grift or what, but like possibly. That's why I was like when I saw know, it, like six dollars, and that's oh, why man, I'm reaching. That that's why I'm reaching out to people like you, and like I gave you links to the full issues. Plus, in that link, there was the next two issues of the book. I mean, you can see that I've got them all done. Going into yeah. this campaign, just for the three issues of this campaign and stretch goals and add-ons and stuff, I made sure I had over 140 pages of work done. So, like, That's what I'm saying. You got everything done. And, and like I said, just for this particular stream right here, you've created uh, a couple of uh, secret perks uh, for people uh, who are – deciding whether or not to take the plunge uh you can get a little bit of a better deal than just going on the indiegogo so look in the description there and click on those links if you are uh in the mind to support tales from nerosville uh you know this like i said you can't beat that price man you cannot beat that price <laughs> I know. and uh and i and i love newsprint um I might have to have brand recolored for uh, more of a newsprint type style because there are people that have asked if I would consider doing a newsprint version of the book because uh, that is, uh, <laughs> oh man. So yeah, and is, I, I feel like there's people that might be turned off by the newsprint. I, I also feel that there's probably comic readers out there right now who have never read a newsprint book like never picked an actual right. newsprint book oh, off a new comic rack because it's been a long time yeah and i mean but that's what i grew up on though that's yeah. like i've got i've got a box full of uh old comics from the 70s and 80s you know spider-man and you know you know avengers and captain america and you know just teenage mutant turtles all this kind of stuff and it's all printed on newsprint uh you know 
obviously when Image and what was Malibu Comics, they, they started taking off a little more and they, they were like, hey, uh, let's improve the color technology. Hey, you know, so when you got those image books and you saw, and you was like, oh, they done stepped their game up a little bit, the paper, and it, they've got like magazine paper and stuff, you know, and they've got the full computerized colors and all this. And yeah, it definitely popped off the page. And I understand uh, just, just technology improving everything. You want to keep going. But man, I loved that. I love the way the newsprint smelled. I love the way it felt in my finger, you know, touching yeah. my fingers. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I am not offended by newsprint, but I do know, um, you know, some people are like, yeah, I kind of want the more modern stuff. But man, you know, yeah. especially if, if, you know, you get you're getting signed books. So you're signing these books for six bucks and five shipping, man. You can't <laughs> beat that. I know, I'm I, like, I, and they're autographs. So I'm like, come on, man. Take yeah, a grudge. I'm an unknown. I know I'm not going to get wealthy off of this campaign. I just want the books in people's hands. I want eyes on the pages. I want readers. I want to get some feedback and see what people, you know, like. And that's part of the reason why this book is sort of anthology in nature is that I'm looking forward to hearing from, you know, readers, hearing which characters they like, which, you know, characters they didn't like, who they want to see more of. Because, you know, I definitely have my favorites. That doesn't mean Antonio is going to like, you know, the favorite character that I like writing. But, uh, mm. you know, I... I, I'm old. I still use the term Baxter paper when it comes to the new comics. Like back in the day, whenever Marvel would do something on that, you know, heavy stock, they would advertise that it's going to be on Baxter paper. Now I want to go old school and stick with the newsprint. I if I, if I do trade. Go ahead. Uh Oh, did I lose you? Wait a minute. Hopefully, uh, uh oh. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. All right, Jason. I was like, well, what happened? I was like, I thought I, I thought I offended Antonio. Oh, you just shut it down. <laughs> I was like, you froze up. I was like, what happened? But um, no, no. Uh, repeat what you were saying, because like I said, there was just a minute there. Where you oh, didn't... really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, as far as the uh, you know the anthology feel of the books, I just want to get the books out there, do different things, hear back from the readers. That's why I want to do a whole bunch of characters to see who likes what, who they want to see more of. And, uh, you know, do, do it with the old school feel with the newsprint. And maybe if I do collections or trades down the line, I'll do it on the high gloss paper for square bound for collections. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for now I'm sticking with the newsprint and, uh, trying to keep the eighties alive. <laughs> I feel you on that. Looks like, uh, Someone has backed you now. You're at 594. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's that's good, man. It's it's always uh, appreciate everybody that's that's watching and you know and uh, your consideration and supporting a lot of these independent creators that we feature on the channel. Uh, you know, it it's so important. It, I just I'm just real sensitive to it, just based on you know trying to launch campaigns and having them fail. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was like I, in the first first time I was on Indiegogo, you know, 60 days and I raised 95 bucks, you know, and it was just but yeah, I made it. You know, I look back on that now. I made a bunch of mistakes, man. You know, uh, just I can't wait, uh, you know, till we get this book to print and then, you know, we set up the second campaign because I, I was like, I'm anticipating a different response, uh, you know, yeah. from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that ninety-five dollar campaign was brutal. Yeah, this this was my first campaign. I didn't know where to set my goal, so I set it where it would be beyond my break-even point and leave me a little money to pay another creator for a future issue. Um, because with with newsprint, the books are considerably cheaper, but you must order in quantities of five hundred. So I'm I'm paying for fifteen hundred books no matter what, and uh, you know I will never even if I don't sell another if I don't pick up another backer from today on, you know I won't look at the campaign as a failure. It's a learning process. I'm ordering the books. I'm fulfilling the perks, and then with five hundred, I've got plenty for my next campaign. When I launch issues four, five, and six, there's going to be a tier there, obviously for one through six. So. Yeah, I uh, I made sure everything was done. I made sure 
I was ready to rumble when I made sure I had money in the bank so that if there weren't enough backers, I can finance this on my own. I don't want to, but you know, that's that's the reality of it. So let me let me uh let me see. I'm looking at the chat, jalapeno milk. Uh so I guess we got two questions from jalapeno milk. He says, uh issue one is called lightning balls. Is this tongue in cheek? Uh it's sort of tongue in cheek, but you know the characters are lightning, Doug, and Airball, so it's lightning balls. <laughs> the, the title does uh, get me a little giddy. I will admit. Yeah. Uh, and then, one of the, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, brother. Okay. One of the things that turns me off about a lot of the modern comics is the lack of humor. I mean, not mm -hmm. everything has to be Deadpool. There seems to be no middle ground. It's either all serious, you know ramming morals down your throat or it's over the top dead deadpool you know break the fourth panel or whatever you know just ridiculous humor there's no reason why comics can't be fun and i can't have little nods there to the reader without you know hitting them in the face with the humor so you know i think fun is something and you know entertainment that's like that's what knuckle supper studios is based on is entertaining I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I'm not going to tell you what you should think. I don't want real life. I want escapism. I want to escape from my real life for five goddamn minutes and read a comic book, you know? <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to give people, you know? I run a little Debbie's route for a living. I drive a 20-foot box truck to 20 stores a day, carrying heavy things into a store and filling, the, filling up shelves. I don't want to come home and, you know read how I should be living my life or what I should be doing with my money or my votes or whatever. So, you know, I'm trying to take people out of their real life every day, nine to five, and, you know, hopefully make them chuckle and enjoy themselves for a little bit. I, I hear you on that. What was it? Uh, uh, Richard C. Meyer, he, he uh, did a review on one book where they're, one of the premises of the comic is they're building a wall. And, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what they're trying to yeah. say. And I was just like, come on, man. If you're going to try and give somebody a lesson in morality, at least try to be subtle with it, you know? Yeah. It's like a it's like a pillowcase full of doorknobs with them. Yeah, I, I was just like, yeah, they just hitting you over the head with this this mm -hmm. nonsense, man. And I was, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, so jalapeno milk says uh what's the tone of the comic well the first two issues lightning balls is uh it's essentially a buddy film it's you know it's watching these two guys who have a mission they have a goal and they are gonna stumble and you know have trouble along the way and you're just hoping that they can get to the end and succeed and live through it um and the third issue is it's about revenge. There is there's a section of near Roosevelt. It's called the Alistair Point Pier. It's essentially a boardwalk with an amusement park and everything on it. But the cops are so busy in near Roosevelt proper that the boardwalk has fallen off their radar a little bit. So it's been taken over by street gangs. And uh, they finally the street gangs finally go too far and they kill a young couple on the beach. And a new vigilante steps up and takes the point, the pier as his territory. And uh, he hands out justice very effectively with lots of blood. <laughs> that, that, that sounds interesting. I like that. I like yeah. that. Uh, jalapeno Milk says, good pitch. I'm backing today. Thank you. All right. So I would say to uh, Jalapeno Milk and anyone else, if you are going to back, uh, please use these links that I have in the description here that uh, Jason created, uh, you know, for this for this broadcast, uh, you know, that way you can get you can get a, a little extra something, something for your for your dollars. Uh, you know, uh, use use those secret perks and, you know, get a little extra something. Although, like I said, the price, as you have already seen. Uh, yeah, man, this is this is not. Uh, Who this is, you know. Man, don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. Let's see, work in progress. Ethan is streaming about Mark Wade. Otherwise, there would be more people here. Well, the good thing is, though, that's that's one thing I like about streaming on YouTube. 
these, you know, as we tweet these out, um, you know, uh, you know, as you tweet these out, more people will see them later on because, you know, you'll, you'll get your initial viewing and then people will, uh, uh, you know, they'll come back later and they'll check them out and everything. So, you know, it's just, you just got to promote the streams and everything. Yeah. Yeah. With my, with my work schedule, I rarely see you or Ethan's streams live. Yeah. Uh, I, I watch them when I get home. I usually while I'm sitting and drawing or inking or writing, that's when I catch your streams. So yeah, hey, that's yeah. I, I live on the playback, bro. <laughs> that's <laughs> what it is. Cause I'll see. Oh, okay, a couple hundred people watched it, and then you know you come back and and then you're nearing a thousand. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, okay. So it's like you just people. A lot of people tell me that they're like uh, they're they're doing other work and they'll throw throw on you know one of the playlists or something and just listen to it while while they're doing other things. So yeah, uh, so. Uh, fat soul watch. Uh, hey, brother. Um, I, I I'm sure you're just trying to have fun, but this is definitely not that the other thing. You know, we're just trying to talk to <laughs> to comic creators, but I I do have that other show. But I got stories for that show too. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, this ain't sexy party. So <laughs> yeah. you know where you're at. That's why I, I label sexy party. <laughs> yeah, very very yeah, I let everybody know when we do a sexy party, I label it. So, um. But um, speaking of Ethan Van Skyver, he will actually be here on this channel tomorrow. So I am very, very much looking forward to uh, talking to him and, uh, you know, just uh, having a good conversation, just like we have him right here. But are you doing any other books? Are you, you know, because like I said, you sound like you got a, a whole mythos of, of you know, for, for Tales of Nerosville. Is there any other projects you're working on? Well, I I self-published before. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I self-published. And that was back before the days of crowdfunding. Mm. And you just had to pull the money out of your pocket, order books, and do cons and hope for the best. And it was a nightmare. I mean, it got to be... The cons were more about having fun, getting wrecked with other creators in the bars after the con you know, and hopefully sell on 10 bucks. So we did a book back in the day, me and my old studio partner. Um, he came with me, came to me with an idea and it was a fun concept. Um, and we did two issues of the book and he decided he didn't want to do any more. And I think part of the problem was he had a very short attention span because after he did those two issues, he re he didn't want to do a third issue. It was going to be a three issue arc. So he came to me with a new idea that was a two issue arc. Well, he did one issue of that, didn't want to do the second issue and came to me with another day. I was like, nah, man, I'm out. Like you got to finish something. <laughs> but I am thinking about rehashing this old story and stretching it out because his original idea, I could have run with so many different ways. It was essentially death, like the actual being of death and the four horsemen and the, you know, the, devil and all of that has evolved into sort of a business, not a business here on earth, but like they all have their role. They have their job to do and it's run like a corporation. Well, death decided that uh, he wanted out of his position and he had laid the groundwork by seeding heirs on earth throughout the years. So he went in search or sent his demons in search of someone to fulfill his role so he can move on to something else. And uh, it just, it led to a lot of different things. Um, some of them, you know, one ended up being a serial killer. One joined the cloth and um, it led to a war between good and evil on earth. I could have, I would have run it for six issues. I could have stretched this thing out and I am seriously looking at going back and, Maybe trying that again because just doing the cons, we sold the first two issues. And then for the next couple of years, I would have people come up to the table and ask me if the next issue was out. I'm like, no, sorry, it's it's dead in the water. I mean, you still got your files. I would definitely look into, or are you just going to have it completely redrawn, do all that kind of stuff? No, the first two issues are done. I've got all my files. Like I said, I back everything up and keep it just in case. Um, 
and I've had artists come to me who are like, I don't really like superheroes. I like more of this kind of stuff. And I've had at least two different artists right after the fact that came to me and said, Hey, I'd like to pick this up where he left off. And I was like, no, nah, I just don't, I didn't have the money. I mean, it was so expensive funding everything out of pocket back in the day. But uh, yeah, I think I might just pick it up where it left off. I might have to work more, work some more uh, into the original issues to flesh them out a little bit. The artist that I work with back in the day would like to come in and change the script, but he wouldn't discuss changing the script with me. He would just draw the pages different and hand them to me and be like, okay, here you go. And it really didn't work out very well. Mm. So, so, but yeah, I, I think about rehashing that one all the time. I worked with another writer years ago and uh, he had a great idea for a story that would be more in the vein with the boys. But this was I love Garth Ennis. This was 12 years ago. He wrote this. Mm -hmm. I had an artist draw the first issue for me. And um, the writer had published books through our, I think it was archaic and things just didn't take off and he got beat down by life and decided he didn't even want to do it so i had the first issue completely done and that is something i think i would like to possibly crowdfund i think if people saw this and how over the top it was it, it would really run but he and i are such completely different writers i don't know that it's something i could tackle writing so i would have to drag him back into either write it or at least outline it for me but I think that it is definitely something that, that people would be all over. Well, when you were describing it, it, it sounded, here's what I, the vibe I got. I got um, American Gods from Neil Gaiman and then a little bit of The Devil's Advocate, the, the Al Pacino, uh, Keanu Reeves movie. That's what it, it sounded <laughs> like. It sounded like a kind of a little mix between those two. Uh, yeah. Maybe it wasn't what you were going for, but I was like, when you just, when you just, especially when you talk about the gods, or, you know, like, and it was run like corporate. I was like, that's American gods. It sounds, but then, you know, when you start talking about like the different children and all, and I was like, okay, so that's the devil's advocate. It just, it sounded like a cool mix between the two. Cause I, I like both of those things. So I was like, American gods, thumbs up, devil's advocate, thumbs up. So why not, you know, do like a, peanut butter and uh, jelly thing and just mush them together. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to look into those. I'm not familiar with either of those. Really? No. Nope. <laughs> well, they've got they've got a pretty good uh pretty good version of American Gods as a TV show which airs on Stars. Okay. And uh, now but that's the thing, you know, some people but I mean it was it was uh uh American Gods was just written as a novel. Oh, okay. It was just written as a novel. Although I think, if I'm not mistaken, there is a actual graphic novel of it now where it's been illustrated. It's just like anything, like Game of Thrones, and they go, oh, let's do Game of Thrones Illustrated. But, you know, it was a New York Times bestseller, but Neil Gaiman is a legend you, to, to me, you know, to, you know, all the stuff that he did in the, uh, you know, the you know all that sand, the Sandman stuff just was like, oh, Sandman, and I was like, I would very much like to to talk to Neil Gaiman one day. Ho hopefully, one day I can make that happen. Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, but Neil Gaiman uh, originally, you know, he just, you know, he's done was I think there's what's called Preludes and Nocturnes. There's so many different uh, yeah. uh, Sandman. I don't know if you ever read any of the uh, old Vertigo stuff. I don't know what what did you read like coming Dude, up. I well, okay, so what got me into comic books was G.I. Joe. One day when I was, no, when I was 13, I was playing with my, my G.I. Joe figure. Oh, the figure, so you weren't watching Harry comic books. No, I was watching the cartoon, and then an ad came on for a G.I. Joe comic book. I'm like, there's a G.I. Joe comic book? Like, I had never read a comic book in my life up until that day. So I went running up to my mom. I'm like, Mom, there's a G.I. Joe comic book. We got to find a comic book store, like, tomorrow. And my mom is an amazing woman. She turns around to me and goes, I know where there's a comic book store. We can go this weekend. And man, we went out. It was in the flea market in the basement of our local mall. 
And I turned the corner, and there was an entire wall of new comics and boxes of back issues. I was like, Jesus Christ, how many comic books are there? Like, And so I bought all the G.I. Joes they had on the new new comic shelf. And uh, not knowing that comics come out once a month, I had her drive me back there every week expecting a new issue. <laughs> like, like a TV show. And you know, did they, after, did they not have back issues at your uh, shop? They did, and I would buy them when I went there. I mean, I was thirteen; I was making all my money mowing lawns and stuff, so I didn't have a lot of money to go around. But now, you know, books were sixty cents a piece or whatever it was, so it wasn't a big deal. But uh, once I realized that comics didn't come out every week, I started looking on the rack, and I found. Have you heard of Whisper by? Uh, uh, I can't remember who originally published it, but it was. Picked up by First Comics. It was a very it was Capital Comics back in the day. Oh wow! Is, issue one had a Michael Golden cover that is gorgeous, and oh, it's a ninja. It's a female ninja, so it's this hot female ninja with a Michael Golden cover. I was like, and they had the first two issues there, so I was like, okay, I'll buy these. And then uh, I I got lucky in that I saw Secret Wars on the shelf, and it was one with the Hulk holding up the you know yeah. whatever with all the characters. And I was like, hey, I like Spider-Man. He used to have a cartoon back in the 60s. I watched the repeats, you know, when I'm home during the day. So I went down and my comic store at the time had the new issue and like three most recent issues behind it on the new issue rack. And then all the way down at the end, they had an old issue rack, which sometimes went back a year, still sitting there at cover price. So I think 258 was the recent issue. So I got all of the black costume issues at cover price. They had like he had a pile of two fifty twos. I should have bought them all. Um but I mean that was it. Once I read Spider Man and Secret Wars, I was like, holy shit, superheroes are cool. And uh the dude offered me a job at the comic book store then. So I was working there on the weekends and every penny I made I was buying comic books and Chinese throwing stars, which he sold out of the counter too. Uh so yeah, I mean that was when I was four thirteen and I just, for years, I just went in there and bought everything up. But mostly in the 80s and 90s, I was buying indie comics. Like, I was a huge fan of Dark Horse and mm. Pacific Comics and Eternity and Eclipse. Just buying all that stuff. And, like, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm, you speaking my language, brother. Yeah. There you go. And, dude, Silver Wolf. Have you ever read Silver Wolf comics? I have not. I have not. No. But, but uh, like, the Dark Horse stuff, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, read all that and... Yeah, yeah like that Star Wars stuff that they were doing, and yeah, yeah, and I fell in love with all of this stuff. And then I found, I read an ad somewhere. It was for a comic book called Grips from Silver Wolf Comics, and it said it was essentially if Wolverine and the Punisher had a love child, it would be Grips. Uh, it was originally drawn by Tim Vigil, if you're familiar with Tim's work. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. I am. And so I bought that, and then I started finding all these others, and like this was like true low budget. It was good books, but like, you know, just black and white indie books put out and they had a whole bunch of different series. And like, that was it. Like, I was never a DC guy and I was a Marvel zombie. So I bought all the Spider Man and X Men books, but then I was buying up all the independent comics I could find as well. So, like, that's what I grew up on. That, you know, that metaphysical stuff like Sandman and stuff. I was a headbanger back in the day. I didn't care about any of that. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't read my first novel until I was like 25 years old. So no, no Alan Moore swamp thing. None of that stuff. Nope. Oh, uh, the only thing similar to that that I got into is I discovered fables years later, loved fables, loved Jack of all, whatever it was, but like, I loved those books. So then I did start checking more of those kind of books out. But by then like uh, death and all of that kind of stuff was, was too far gone for me to jump on. Mm. So yeah, I was all about the indies and superheroes and stuff. So no Garth and his preacher, none of that stuff. Oh, I yeah, I did read Preacher. Oh, um, okay. I, got, I got on Preacher late and got most of the back issues. Um, what else? I can't think of any other books like that. But like, I did get V for Vendetta. You know, yes. some of those more you know those kind of prestige formats where it was a limited series. It, it was tough for me back in the day to jump on existing series that were in the three or four hundreds like because i'm a completist and so my god I gotta have all. so i mean i jumped on amazing spider-man with number 258 i think i'm probably about 40 issues short of a complete run now oh wow 
Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw on eBay about a month and a half ago, someone had they had a complete Spider-Man run from issue uh, one all the way up to uh, 800. They had the whole and I mean, it was it was insane to me, but they were wanting like 15 grand for it. You know, it was like the whole you know, and some of them were in kind of like he he showed some pictures of like yeah I've got issue one but the covers torn off of it you know that kind of yeah. you know it's just a it's a damaged copy but it's issue one of Spider Man and everything but he was on like like I said fifteen thousand dollars and he also had like about another two thousand uh uh different uh, some X Men and Avengers stuff a lot it was just it was like a plethora of Marvel stuff it was it, I was just like. Cause I've got like six boxes of comics in my closet now, you know, long boxes, <laughs> you know, just stuff that I collected. But you actually kind of made me have like a flashback when when you were talking about like the uh, uh, Chinese throwing stars and stuff. Cause uh, when you talked about the Black Sue Spider Man, you talked about the uh, throwing stars. It kind of made me think about some of the stuff that uh, uh, we we young folks used to sneak into my classroom into the eighties. Oh, yeah. um, People would, you know, we'd be sitting there listening to the teacher and, you know, under the desk, someone would pass you like Ninja Magazine and it would have like, you could order all the like the swords and all this stuff. And I'd be like, oh, wow, that looks cool. And, you know, would, be showing you all the different moves and everything. I always wanted the climbing spikes that went on your yeah, palms yeah. and your hands. Yeah. Like, like I'd be able to climb a freaking brick wall or something with those things on. And they had the different, they had the katanas. They yeah. had the katanas. They had there was a couple of throwing stars. There was one there was a belt buckle throwing star thing. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, you put it, yeah, you put the the, the throwing star clipped it, it clipped right there to the attachment on the belt and everything. But yeah. as I you know, as I got hip to it, I was like, wait a minute, if it's if it's sharp. Like I got a gut, so if I yeah. <laughs> like they gonna be cutting me while I got it, you know. But it, it was really cool. I was like, all this stuff. We we you know we do that and. Um, I saw someone snuck in, uh, uh, bringing into the the black suit Spider Man. Someone had brought in an issue of Transformers. It was a uh, you know an issue of, of Transformers where they actually had uh, you know Spider Man crossover with, yeah. with Transformers, and we were all passing that around. You know, it's like, and the teacher was like, "Hey, don't Tonio, don't make me come back here and take that." Uh, that, yeah. that put what you know so i just remember and and you see somebody someone would bring in like teenage mutant ninja turtles they would have it you know and it'd be but i was like this is black oh yeah and they were black and white the old yeah. eastern laird ones and like you know nobody knew kids loved them back in the day. they had no idea what they were going to become and like some of the color the covers weren't even like true color they were like almost like a two color process or something yeah, yeah. But, yeah they were real muted yeah and, yeah, those those it was a different world we lived in back then. Cause that's why I saw Cerebus for the first time. So much snuck in. They had like a Cerebus. Yeah, and uh, it was a it was actually like a little. It was a graphic novel, and it was it was um, it was like a collected Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Cerebus had crossed over with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I was reading it, and I was like, "Wow, man!" And then somebody brought in like Dark Knight Returns and stuff. And I was just like, this, yeah. is, this is on another level, man. This is different. Yeah. You know, this is, uh, but you know, I just, I just love the medium of comics. Uh, you know, I, I like, uh, you know, uh, great visual storytelling, but you know, stories like say, uh, Marvel's from uh, Kurt Busiek or, or, uh, you know, Kingdom Come, uh, from Mark Way, but obviously both illustrated by, uh, Alex Ross, which, yeah. Man, how do I get Alex Ross to come on? I was like, that would be nice. I would really love to talk to Alex Ross. Um, yeah, it was back in the day, there was an indie book, and I, I'm i going to say it was Eclipse. I can't be sure, but it was called Liberty Project. And yeah. I think that was written by Kurt Busiek and drawn by, um, and I'm drawing a blank on it, but it was like such a cool concept. It was it was thunderbolts it was criminals whose way to get you know clear and free was to be superheroes and it was so good it was so much fun and uh yeah i mean if you and it was released 
it was re-released probably 10 years or so ago in a collection. Oh, I mean, it, that, out. Yeah, that is definitely something you want to check out. And like, yeah, it's early, I remember yeah. when they did Thunderbolt because that's why I was like, that's why I miss Wizard Magazine because yeah. you know you'd see a uh, Wizard would feature all these cool, uh, cool projects, and and they would they weren't shy about featuring indie stuff. And yeah. uh, but I remember when Thunderbolts first came out, and they hadn't done the reveal that these were all like you know super villains and everything. Yeah. And they were like, wow, Thunderbolt, and it. You know, you could tell people were enjoying it. They were like, this is pretty well written and it's great, great art and everything. And it's kept going. And then they did the reveal. Yeah. They did the reveal. And everybody, just, all of a sudden, I saw the, the prices on the back issue just go. Yeah. <laughs> it just shot up. Yeah. I was just like, I was reading that kind of stuff. I was reading like New Warriors. Um, you know, they start doing a lot of the variant covers, like you know Michael Turner. I started seeing Michael Turner pop up. Man, oh, man, I love Michael Turner stuff and, and a lot yeah. of the old image. You know, so that's that's the kind of stuff I was into, man. I was just, I just, I I miss having a magazine like Wizard Magazine though, because I thought w- Wizard was incredible, man. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Wizard was like your must read every month when that came out. Like you tore that thing open and it told you what you had to you know what you had to read and there is nothing like that now i hear ethan talk about it a lot mm. like something something needs to replace the void left by wizard you know big time yeah, I, yeah. that's called uh I'd, I'd love to well i think his name was garib seamus uh, mm-hmm. and uh you know he was the publisher and i'd I, I know he's doing because they've got the Wizard Con YouTube channel or whatever, and they barely put any content on. <laughs> they, yeah. they they were doing like con video. It's like, hey, we're we're here with Ethan Van Skyver because I say he's got a video on there. Uh, it's it's that kind of deal. But I I don't know if they could do Wizard in print form anymore because a lot of magazines obviously have died. But yeah. maybe they could they could do uh like a Wizard World YouTube channel. And you know, feature interviews with creators and sh- uh, showcase indie projects and stuff like that. I think that would be cool. But, yeah, uh, yeah, it could be like CBR or Bleeding Cool if they actually you know gave a shit about comic books. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? uh, yeah. Oh, I definitely know. Especially when when you talk about uh, someone like Rich Johnston or, or something. Yeah. Like, you know. Uh, yeah. So yeah. He he only showcases uh, certain projects. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there seems to be a trend there. But yeah, man. Um, man. Okay, so we're coming to the end here. So let me get you one more time. Tell us about uh, Tales from Nerosville. Tell us why you should back it. Obviously, uh, check those secret links that I have in the description there. But go ahead and uh, pitch the project one more time before we close it up. All right. Uh, Nerosville is a town unlike any other. It has more superheroes than any other city in the world, which is awesome. But along with that comes more supervillains than any other city in the world, which is not awesome. And it's in the vein of Astro City, where it's a rotating cast of characters. It's not the same character or team every week, or I'm sorry, every issue. And it, it allows me to ex- explore different genres. So, you know, the first two issues, you're going to have a Blue Beetle and Booster Gold story. The third issue, you're going to have a Punisher type story. The fourth issue is almost like Great Lakes Avengers. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the fifth issue uh, is it's a villain trying to go straight. Uh, six and seven are going to be Teen Titans esque. So yeah, I mean it's it's in the vein of entertainment and fun. You know, the point is to take you out of real life and let you escape the real life for a while and just enjoy good comic books, you know, the comic books like they used to put out. So, you know, and I'm doing them on newsprint. I'm making them affordable for everyone. You know, it's not six or seven bucks an issue. It's, you know, this is two dollars an issue. Cover price is going to be two fifty an issue. So and I'm throwing freebies in, you know, the links that Antonio has, you get freebies with it. And I always throw extra stuff in. So, yeah, I mean, just my, my thing on the website says uh, support us, help us make good comics and we'll put them in your hands. It's a win win. 
Hey, that, hey, I like that. Uh, you know, and like I said, you're not you're not putting a hurting on anybody's wallet. Uh, you know, take advantage of those secret perk links that I have in the description here. You know, uh, you know, just go and check it out. You get get about sixty some odd pages of content. Not to mention, uh, if he hits a thousand, then you could expand that up to what about eighty pages? Yeah, he said. So that's that's not a bad deal. And you're only spending like what eleven bucks. Yep. Can't, you can't beat that, man. <laughs> so, uh, you know, support these indie indie creators. Um, uh, Jason, tell us how we can reach out to you if we're following you on social media and all that kind of stuff. Oh God, uh, uh, on uh, Twitter, I am KSS Comics, uh, Knuckle Supper Studios Comics, just KSS Comics, and pretty much everywhere else, uh, Jason Meadows. I just I go by my real name. It's just Jason Meadows. Oh, so no alias, no secret identity. It is uh, I used to do a podcast, and my name on the podcast was Happy Jack. They started calling me after my creation. So still to this day, people come up to me and call me Happy Jack. But, yeah, I'm just – it's Jason Meadows on everything. All right. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. I definitely want to thank uh, Jason Meadows for stopping by the channel today and uh, telling us about Tales from Nerosville, please, please, please check those links in the description. Uh, check it out there. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. And if you guys want to reach out to me, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and right here on this YouTube channel everywhere is at Akari Press. And if you type in AkariPress.com, it will take you directly to my Indiegogo campaign for my comic book series brand with the phenomenal Kanan White. We're on Teespring. We're on Amazon.com. The links to those are in the description. Back tales from Nero'sville, guys. I'm out. Thank you.